Good morning. I just wanted to let everyone know we're going to give it another 30 seconds or so for everyone to get logged in. This is Kate from Maynard Casterison, and I will do a full introduction here in just a moment. So give us another 30 seconds or so to let a few more people log in and get ready to go. Okay, and so good morning again. Welcome to another Manor Costeras and Third Party Thursday. I'm Kate Watts, your facilitator. I am a client service manager for Manor, and I've spoken with most of you who are attending today. So if you have any questions after the presentation or need additional information, please feel free to reach out to me. Today, Marvin with Active Reporter will be giving you guys a look at Active Reporter. And we will answer questions at the end of the presentation. Those can be placed in the questions or chat boxes on the right hand, bottom right hand side of your screens. This webinar is being recorded and will be sent out to all registrants once it is uploaded and edited. So I want to let you all know that. And from here, Marvin, you are on. It is, you're ready to take it over. Thank you, Kate, and thank you, Maynard Custerian, Custerison, for inviting it, us into the webinar today. Okay. Um, and so I'm Marvin Crosno, and I'll be your presenter today for Active Reporter. Uh, just a few disclaimers. This is presentation is for information only. It contains our opinions, and it's proprietary. So just a few housekeeping things. Uh, Kate has already introduced you to those. I'm hoping that everybody has good audio at this point. Uh, if you have questions, she uh, indicated you should type them into the chat uh, area of the webinar and it's being recorded and will be sent to you at the end. Just a little bit of an introduction to our company. Our company is Intuitive. It rhymes with intuitive. And we've been in the accounting software area for over 40 years. And the product that we're gonna show you today is Active Reporter. It has been under development for at least 15 years. And when Microsoft announced a couple of years ago that they were no longer going to enhance Management Reporter, we decided that we could use our experience of integrating Excel directly to an ERP system to introduce something that we called Active Reporter. Uh, this was introduced in GPUG 2017. And I want to emphasize the product is very mature for something that was just introduced two years ago. The only thing that's really new about the product is the interface to Dynamics GP. I want to go over the three main features that we're going to talk about today. The first main feature is that we're going to talk about how Excel directly integrates to your Dynamics GP data. It is pure Excel. It is not an application built on top of Excel like many of our competitors. And we also have the ability to take information out of your management reporter system today and move it to Active Reporter so that you can get started with Active Reporter very rapidly. The second thing that we're going to talk about during the presentation is that we increase the visibility into your Dynamics GP data. We'd like to think about this as smart list on steroids because for all of your GL data, we can show you your data much faster and much be, and be able to sort and filter it much better than what you can with SmartList. And the third thing that we're gonna talk about is something called the active trial balance. Every day in working with an accounting solution, you need to be able to reach into your data and look and see what's posted into various accounts with your data and, and trace and research that data. The active trial balance will allow you to do that. And then, of course, the fact that our product is very fast. That's something that you'll see today in the presentation. Just a little bit of, uh, just a little bit about our Excel financial reporting. All of us, 15 and 20 years ago, wrote management reporter-like products. These were products that we could go in and describe to a system where we wanted to put what on a financial report. But 90 or 95% of the time, all of these were exported to Excel for final presentation. 
so we asked the question, why do we want to put a program between the data and Excel? Why not just use Excel? Active Reporter is just pure Excel. It's not an application where you have to run it through an engine to get to the Excel spreadsheet. It is just Excel with added functions. And we're going to show you that here in a few minutes. With our solution and the Excel spreadsheet that you generate, you can do pivot tables, outlining, external data references, everything. But for any number on that Excel spreadsheet, you can drill down and see all of the components of that number back in your ERP system, and you can drill back to Dynamics GP to see the original entry. The word active and active reporter really means something because we're built on active database technology. And you'll see that when we look at the active trial balance here in a few minutes. Now, in demonstrating the product, what I like to do is bring up the finished product first. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at a finished Excel spreadsheet. And then in a few minutes, we're going to back off and show you how easy it is to produce that Excel financial workbook. And so with that, we're going to put away the PowerPoint and uh, go, into the, go into the presentation. And as I said, what we want to do first is show you a finished financial statement. So this is a typical balance sheet. This is a typical balance sheet for the company Fabricam. And the essence of the Active Reporter product is that we can highlight any number on this particular spreadsheet and drill down to the underlying data. So that particular number, of $160,000, is made up of 1,775 transactions. Down in the lower left-hand corner, there's the number of transactions. And we can drill and look all the way through all of these transactions. So I just scroll through all 1,775 of those transactions. But once I find one of those transactions, I can look back to Dynamics GP with a single keystroke and look at that transaction back in Dynamics GP. So here is that 51940 back in Dynamics GP. And of course, once you get into Dynamics GP, you can further trace that back to any of the original source documents in Dynamics GP. So just to reiterate once more, what Active Reporter does in the Excel presentation is it produces these spreadsheets, and for any number on the spreadsheet, you can drill down do all of the underlying detail. In this case, there's 3,376 transactions. I can look at all of them, but for any particular transaction, I can, with a single keystroke, drill back and look at that in Dynamics GP. Now let's talk for a minute about this intermediate window here. And we call this the Drill Down Explorer. This Drill Down Explorer shows you all, shows you all of the transactions behind any number on your spreadsheet. With this particular drill down explorer, you can sort. So you can sort by the credits, you can sort by the debits, you can sort by the description, the account number, and look how fast it is. And of course, you can sort by the date. So you can see all of the dates for all of the transactions. And in this drill down explorer, you can take any subset of numbers that you can highlight here, and down in the status bar at the bottom of the screen, you can see that I've highlighted $12,425 worth of debits, $6,511 worth of credits, and the net difference in debits and credits are $5,900. And for any highlighted section of the Drill Down Explorer, you can also copy that to Excel. So here are all of those transactions copied to Excel just in case you want to go to Excel and experiment or do further research. And of course, our copy to Excel is extremely fast. I'm going to highlight all 3,376 of them and copy that to Excel, and you'll see that it just takes a few seconds to copy all of those to Excel, much faster than SmartList. So here's the entire 3,000 entries over in Excel. So. That is what we are going to end up with after we build our financial designs. Something like this particular spreadsheet that's in Excel that we can drill down to the underlying detail and drill back to Dynamics GP. But before we go build our own, let's just look at some variations that we have in our spreadsheet. So I first showed you a balance sheet. Here's an income statement compared to budgets. 
And of course, since it's Excel, we can create we can create any kind of of uh, of analysis in Excel, and we show that over here on the right. And of course, we can do cash flow statements. We can do income statements that looks back four years. We can we can do income statements that compare dates with uh, con with uh, aggregate accounts. So this is a little different, and this is fairly hard to do in something like management reporter, where we put the account aggregation across the horizontal axis, and we put time down the down the vertical axis. Normally, it's done opposite of that in management reporter, and we can do multi-company statements. This particular statement has three different companies, Fabricam, Gabricam, and University. In this case, they're separate databases. So we can combine separate databases, but you can also run companies as a segment of your chart of account numbers and use a product like MIM, multi-entity management, to, uh, to keep those in sync. So we can use any combination of databases or segmented uh, segmented account representations for the company and combine those in a consolidated statement like you see. And of course, we can do very fancy boardroom type reports where we're embedding not only graphs, but we're also embedding, in this case, photographs, images, JPEGs, PDFs, anything that you want to do or can do in the, in the Excel product you can do with our product. Now, what I've said several times in the last few uh, minutes is that we are just Excel, and we're just Excel with embedded functions. So if we look at one of these cells that's producing numbers, if you look up in the function bar, you see something, you see a formula here that is the balance formula. So this is one of the over 50 functions that we've added to Excel to do the, to do the presentations in Excel. So there's the balance formula. If I look back over here at another presentation and look at a formula, this is, let me do that again, this is a formula that uses the activity function. So that's the activity during a financial accounting period. And if we look back at another function, back over here in the balance sheet, or let's look at the income statement here, we'll see that there's a function called year to date. So these are some examples of the functions that we've added to Excel. We've also added the Excel, uh, the Activity HD ribbon to Excel. This is just pure Excel with all of the ribbon components that you expect, but there's a special Activity HD ribbon. And in that ribbon, we show you all of these functions that I just, that I just showed you on the spreadsheet. So here's the Activity function, the Balance function, Debit, Credit, Activity, Year-to-Date, and so forth. We've also added functions dealing with descriptions, so segment descriptions. We've also added functions that deal with individual accounts. We've also added functions that deal with periods. We've also added functions that deal with the company. So all of these functions are available to you to place individual items inside, the, inside of the cells on an Excel spreadsheet. So now let's put away the pre-built sample and let's go into the Active Reporter product itself. And before we go build a financial, I just want to give you an overview of the Active Reporter product. So in the uh, window that you see here on the left, you see Active Reporter on the left, and you see Dynamics GP on the right. With Active Reporter, we have five different com companies, Fabricam, Gabricam, Habricam, Mabricam, and University. I've included the University because it's a large data set with over 3 million transactions and we'll be able to show you the speed of the product in a real live company. But we're gonna first start in Fabricam. And you'll notice that we have a lot of visibility into the Dynamics GP data. Just like you do over here in Dynamics GP with the actual application or smart list or something like that. We can see all of your chart of accounts. So here's a complete listing of all the chart of accounts. You can see this in Dynamics GP, but this particular presentation is very fast. There's only 503 items shown in the right-hand screen. We call this the high-definition screen. But if we go to something like the journal entries, there are 3,361 journal entries. But if I go to something even more uh, with more volume and look at the details, single-leg 
entry into our accounting system, you'll see that there's 59,000 of them. So here are all 59,000 postings to all of the Fabricam data. And here it is in the, in the active reporter product. And just like you can do so from a spreadsheet, we can highlight any one of these particular items and trace it back to the originating entry 86 uh, 8621 uh, over here in Dynamics GP. And of course, you can trace it down to the source document from there, just like you can in a spreadsheet. So we have a lot of visibility into the Dynamics GP data from the active reporter screens in addition to the GP screens. What we really want to do to get started is we want to go in and pull a financial design. Now, a few minutes ago, we were looking at a financial design that I opened from my desktop. But now we want to show you that we also have the capability of install of putting financial designs inside the Active Reporter system or inside the dynamic inside the the uh, SQL Server database. So here we're st we're storing XLSX files inside the database, and I can open that same workbook we had a few minutes ago. I can open it inside of Dynamics GP, and I have the same capability inside of Dynamics GP that I did in storing it in the Windows file system. But I also have a few more capabilities if I choose to store the XLSX files inside of Dynamics GP SQL Server database. I have versioning. So this particular spreadsheet started last October and went through 25 versions the last was uh, just a few days ago on, a, on May 27th, and I have the ability to go back and look at any prior version, and I can restore that version to be the current, or I can just open it and look at it. So if you've been working on a spreadsheet for hours and you realize you just messed everything up, you don't have to call IT to go restore that Excel spreadsheet file from last week or last month. You have your own control. You can restore it yourself because it's stored in the SQL Server database. So we have versioning that we can that we can apply if you store the XLSX files in the, the SQL Server database. But what we really have to told you that we want to do is we want to start from scratch and build a brand new Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to open a new spreadsheet and I'm going to call it the Mainer Financials. So here I'm going to open a new workbook. This is just like opening, opening it in the Windows file system. I do need to give it a date because I need a date to reference some of the numerical numbers that I'm going to put on the spreadsheet in the background. So I'm going to choose April of 2017 and can say OK. Now, if I'm going to produce something like a balance sheet or a some financial design, I would probably want to go up here at the top of the financial design and put in the name of the company. And in this case, it's Fabricam, so I'll just type in Fabricam. But if I type it in as a literal, then if I want to use this for one of my other companies, Fabricam, Gabricam, or University, I would have to retype the literal. So instead of Instead of putting in a literal Fabricam, I'm going to use one of the one of the functions that Active Reporter adds to Excel, namely the company name function. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to I'm going to use that function, except I'm in the wrong mode there. So now I'm going to use that function and it will place the name of the company in here automatically. And since it's just Excel, I can go to the home key, I can color it red, I can make it bold, I can make it big, I can do anything that I want because it's just Excel with added functions. Now down below the name of the company here, I would probably want to put as of a certain date. So I could again type that literal in, but I really don't want to do that because as I change dates, I would want it to change. So I go in here to the periods functions, again a function that Active Reporter has added to Excel. I will say as of period end, and it will use the April 30th date that I chose when I went into the application, namely April of 2017. If I change that to May of 2017 and, re and recalculate, I have to hit the right button, and recalculate, then it will change this to May. Now I'm going to change my I'm going to change my calculation options 
to automatic rather than manual. So in general, I don't have to hit the F9 key in order to make a change. So now if I want to do a balance sheet, I need to go over here to the maybe column B5 and put in the name of a account or the name of a group of accounts in my Dynamics GP database. So I'm going to start with just an account. So I'm going to go up here to the account and I want the account description of a particular account code. So I'm going to use the account 000-1100-00-A. Now this A at the end of the account number is something that Active Reporter uses to distinguish actual entries from budgetary entries, from statistical entries, from IFRS entries. So this is, a, this is something that we call the ledger. You do not make any changes in Dynamics GP. This is all in the background and it does it for you. So as I choose this, I say OK here, then it will put in the name of the cash operating account. That's the name of that account pulled out of the Dynamics GP database. Now over here in H5, I want to put in the balance of this account. Well, I could go to my financial functions and choose balance. But just to show you that we're integrated with Excel, I'm going to go to the function insert wizard and I'm going down and pull in the activity financial functions. So here are the activity financial functions and I'm going to choose the balance here. There's no difference in using it this way or calling it in from the financial functions up here. It's the same function. As I look at this, it's also integrated so it uses the function arguments wizard directly in Excel. There are five filters that I can put on this number and I can filter them. I can filter the whatever number I want in here by period, by account, by company or by unit of measure or or currency. So to begin with, I'm not going to put any filters on it. I'm just going to say OK. And it brings back a number 132. And since it's, it's just Excel, I'm going to go over here and format that. So $132 million. Now I know some of you are accountants in the office and you're going to say, wait a minute. If I add up all my debits and all my credits for all of my accounts as of May 31st, 2017, I should get zero because otherwise I don't have a balanced set of books. So let's look at this number and see what this number consists of. This number consists of 35,000 postings and I look down through here and I start looking at all the postings and wait a minute, I see some accounts that end in a B. Those are my budget entries and I do not want to include my budget entries because in Dynamics GP, budget entries do not have to balance. So let me go back and filter those budget entries out. So I'll go back to my activity HD ribbon. I'll just call in the function. And I will say, I only want those actual numbers. I will want to limit this to the ledger equal to A. So that will just bring in my actual numbers and indeed I get zero. So again, I can start looking down and now there are only uh, 16,000 entries making up that number. But I noticed that I've got a lot of accounts that, do, that are not the 1100-00-A account that I want. So I need to also filter out all of these extraneous accounts. So I'll go back to my function wizard here and I'll also filter this so that the account is just equal to the 000-1100-00-A. And once I do that, I get 389,000. I can drill down on it again and I can sort it in ascending and descending order by account. And you see everything is involved Everything that is involved, these 523 entries, do belong to the proper account. And if I sort it by posting date, I see the latest date is indeed May of 2017. And so that's exactly what I want. That particular number, 389,000, is the balance of this account as of that date. Well, I could continue here. I could add all my accounts. I could start looking at groups of accounts. But this is really too hard. I wanted to start here so that you can see how to build financials the hard way. Now I want to go show you how to build financials a little bit easier way. So I'm going to go to sheet number two. And in sheet number two, I'm going to use something we call a layout wizard. With the layout wizard, this 
does most of the work for you. You can then just do some decoration on the financials to get your finished financial. I'm going to first start with something called balance sheet current versus previous year. This pretty well tells you that I'm going to have a column for current year and a column for previous year. So I'm going to select that, but I haven't told it anything about what I want to put on the individual rows. I could start with every account in the chart of accounts that would be similar to what I started with over here in sheet number one. I also could choose any one of my segments of my chart of accounts, but typically in balance sheet, you want to aggregate accounts. You could aggregate accounts by something that comes from management reporter. You could aggregate accounts by something that I just dreamed up myself, or you could use the categories that GP normally uses to categorize the various accounts in your chart of accounts. I'm going to use all the categories out of the sheet, out of, out of GP, restricted to the balance sheet. So now I'm going to say OK, and there'll be 27 rows in my financial design. So I have essentially on the screen to, right now, I have essentially a complete balance sheet comparing year, current year to prior year. The only thing I need to do to complete this is go in and put in some decoration. So I can do something like assets here. I can go down and split apart some rows and put in some subtotals. So I'll insert some uh, rows here. I will use the function of summation directly in Excel and put in a sum. I'll put in a overstrike top border. I'll put in a dollar sign. I'll use that particular uh, function and pull it over here to put it into the prior year. So the only thing that I need to do to complete this, make it a decorated, really nice financial, is just some totals, some literals, and things like that. Otherwise, it is a complete financial. We call this financial that we auto-generate a template financial. Now you'll notice when we auto-generate, there are some areas over here to the left that are green and some areas up here to the top that are green. I can, with activity functions, go in and hide those. So I can hide those and this looks more like a real financial. But let's see what we've got over here in these views. Let's show these uh, areas that we have in green. Now, the areas that we have in green have nothing to do with the active reporter product itself. These are things that we are capitalizing on the features of Excel. Because in Excel, I can, pull all of my variables out of my formulas and put those up here in the top three rows and the left three columns. So this particular function that's in this cell, G14, references variables up here in G1 and G2 and in A14 and B14. And this function down here also references variables up here in H1 and H2 uh, A21 and B21. So what we've done here is that we've dereferenced all the formulas. So all of these formulas have no direct references. They're all indirect references. And therefore, it makes it very easy to build a, a financial design in Active Reporter. Every variable is restricted to those, in the, those things in the first three rows and the left three columns. Well, what does this give you? Again, this is not a feature of Active Reporter. This is just a feature of Excel. What if I want, I've got 2017 in column G, I've got 2016 in column H. What if I want 2015 in column J? I can very simply copy this column, put it in column J, change this current minus one year to current minus two years, and now I have 2015 in column J. So by dereferencing my variables, it makes it very easy to multiply my efforts extremely fast. What if I want the budgets here in column H? I can copy column G. I can paste those cells into column H. I can change just one reference from the actual ledger to the budget ledger, and now I have the budgets in column H. And I can show you that because I can drill down and every single posting here is from the B ledger or the budget ledger. So I know that I've got the right information, but if I go back over here and I look at this number, 
All of these are coming in from the actual ledger, the A ledger, so those are your actual postings into the financial system in Dynamics GP. So what we've done is we've created a template financial, then we've started putting decoration on it so that we can make it look like a real financial, and then once we get that done, we can extend it with current minus one year, two years, three years budgets and things like that to build a final financial that you can use this month in May of, 19, uh, of 2017, or we can go up here and change the options and change this to February of 2017, and now it will redo this, and all of those numbers have been recalculated, so if I drill down on them, you'll notice my latest posting date starts in, 27, in, May, in February of 2017. So once you've built the financial and saved it, then you can use it over and over and over again as a, as a finished financial in the active reporter product. And now we'll save this, and we notice that our first version was created at 32 minutes after the hour uh, on today's date. So let's put this away for a minute. The next thing that I want to show you is you've probably already built some financials in Management Reporter. And you indeed don't want to start from zero and moving those from Management Reporter to Active Reporter. So we have an example here of a row definition out of Management Reporter. Now the most tedious thing is in Management Reporter is to come up with all of these links to financial dimensions in your row definition. Here is, and in code number 130, we have the accounts from 1100 to 1130 and so forth down through here. So what we're gonna do in moving your financial designs from Management Reporter to Active Reporter, we're going to harvest these row definitions and put them over into Active Reporter. In Active Reporter, we have a similar concept. Instead of row definitions, they're called roll-ups. So I'm going to, going to extract this row definition and put it into a roll-up definition in Active Reporter. And we do that by running a program we call New Roll-Up from Management Reporter Rows. And in order to get there, I need to give it some authentication to get into the Management Reporter database. And now I have a list of all of the row definitions out of Management Reporter listed on the screen. And if you'll notice over here, these are the same row definitions that you have over here in Management Reporter. I'm just going to use this first one, the FAB balance sheet row definition. And that here is number one. So I'm going to choose number one. And as, I, as it builds this for me, I can give it any name that I want. As it builds, look in this area right here, and it will place that row definition out of Management Reporter in Active Reporter. So I'll finish that up. I need to do one more thing, and that is activate this. And now I can go in and look at it and validate that this really is what I extracted from Management Reporter. So here in row code number 130, over here, row code number 130 is my cash operating account. And it includes all the accounts beginning with 1100 and ending with 1130. That's exactly what you see over here in Management Reporter. If we look at the next row, it includes just the one account, 1140. If I look at the next row, it includes everything beginning with a 1-2, which is what we have over here. So what I've done so far is extract this row definition out of Management Reporter and made a roll up in Active Reporter from it. So now let's go back to our financial designs and let's, uh, let's open this Mainer Financials. So I open the workbook. I've got two sheets on the workbook already. I'm gonna put a third sheet out here. And with this sheet, I'm gonna duplicate what we have in, in Management Reporter. So again, I'm gonna go into my layout wizard using the balance sheet of current versus prior year. But this time, I'm gonna use those row definitions that I extracted just now from Management Reporter. And voila, in just a few seconds, I have basically duplicated the account aggregation that we had in Management Reporter. Again, from Management Reporter, there are some literals up here at the top and some totals down here in the middle. Those are not duplicated, so I have a little bit of work to do in putting those literals in. 
and then putting the um, I need to type correctly so I can put assets here, and I need to split apart some of the rows, put in some subtotaling to make it a duplicate of what I have over here in Management Reporter. But 90, 95% of the work has been done for us to move from Management Reporter to Active Reporter. Okay, so we uh, have uh, shown you how to build financials. We've shown you how to move from Management Reporter to Active Reporter. Uh, now I want to show you some more capabilities of the financial designs that you get with Active Reporter. So I'm going to save this one, and I'm going to go back and uh, look at my versions. And you'll notice that it took me four to five minutes to move from Management Reporter to Active Reporter and, and get that template financial. But I'll put this one away now, and I'll put away my Management Reporter row definition. And I want to show you a little bit about the manage, uh, some more pro, some more features of the financials once you get them into uh, Active Reporter. So here is a financial that's designed that's, that's got a lot of the decoration already in it. I give it a date. And so here I have uh, a uh, Fabricam income statement comparative. Uh, this is an income statement uh, comparative for April and year-to-date April. Again, since it, it's uh, just a spreadsheet, I can drill down on the detail. Now, I noticed that in drilling down the detail, uh, if you don't know about Fabricam, the first three characters are the division, the next four characters are the natural account number, and the last two characters are the department. Well, I noticed that this particular financial has departments one, two, and zero. What if I want just a financial for department number two? Well, I can get that with this same financial design by going into my options and choosing that I just want to get department number two. So I can uh, find that and just get department number two, which is sales. And now when I drill down on this number, it's just department number two. Well, this is how we affect the the tree structure. So you can do one tree structure at a time, or you can do something, you can even have uh, things like department number two and uh, going through here and division number. So I can type it without uh, looking at it. So I can also add division number one. And you'll notice that all of the numbers now are from division number zero and department number two. And it also labels it. It says it's the sales division of the corporate, a sales department of corporate division. Well, this is how you can look at your tree structures uh, with uh, immediate gratification. You can do so while you're looking at your spreadsheet. But if you want to actually send this out to your corp, to your uh, divisional manager and let him look at it, we'll actually do that a little bit different way. So we'll uh, we'll uh, look at this spreadsheet and we will. Um, uh, we will send. We will automatically generate those and send them out to our division managers. So what I'll do here, instead of going into the spreadsheet itself, I will publish this financial. Now, in publishing the financial, I need to give it a date, but I want to send this to all of my division managers. So I'm going to iterate over my divisions here, and I could print this out to the printer and physically hand it to them. I could also put it out to a file like a PDF file or any of these other files and email it to them. But what would really be interesting, and I just closed that, so I'm going to open it again. What would really be interesting is I'll have to redo my division. What would really be interesting is to produce Excel spreadsheets and send them an Excel spreadsheet and let them see their financial in the form of a spreadsheet. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, as I do that, I'm going to put it to my desktop over here so you can see the financials being generated here on my desktop. So as I say next, then it's going to generate eight different financials. There's the first one. Here's the second one. Here's the third one and so forth. One for each of my division managers. Now, when I look at those particular spreadsheets that have been produced, I can bring them up and look at them. 
I'm going to notice some peculiar things. One is it does label it for the corporate division. Secondly, the numbers here are numbers, not spreadsheet formulas. So they can't go in and change the formulas. The spreadsheet is also locked. So if I try to make a change, it says the spreadsheet is protected. But if I want to allow them to do so, I can allow them to connect to the database and they can look to their underlying transactions so they can do their own investigation for their, in this case, sales or their expenses. And if you want to allow them to, and they have a Dynamics GP license, they can also drill back to those individual transactions and Dynamics GP and follow those back to the source documents just like you can in the accounting department. But you may not want to let them do that. So you, at most, with just a active reporter license, you can allow them to drill down to the detail without having to have a GP license to drill back to Dynamics GP. And they have the full sorting capability. Uh, they can sort by accounts. They can sort by credits, debits. They can do all of that work and uh, st without, be without the ability to drill back to Dynamics GP. And of course, if I want to look at another division, then here's another division statement. And this particular division doesn't have any activity during that period. Um, I don't really know which ones do and which ones don't. But this is a way that you can create financials, build them in such a way that they're non-editable, that you can still give your division managers access to the data and access to the underlying detail if you want to. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you is not spreadsheets. It's something else that we have in the Active Reporter product that you can use on a daily basis, and that's what I talked to you before about, and that is the trial balance. So the trial balance is something that is usable every single day in your operations because you're always needing to do research on accounts and postings to accounts. Now, over here in Dynamics GP with the trial balance, this is a static report. Once you generate the port report, it is the report. You don't, if you make new postings into the, uh, into the accounts, you do not see them. But over here with Active Reporter, this, this trial balance is alive. It will represent the accounts as they exist right now. Also, I can choose this for any date, any period. So if I want to go back to a prior year and a prior period in that year and say, okay, all of these numbers now are for the prior year. And for any number on here, I can, with a single keystroke, drill back to all of the underlying transactions. And from any of those transactions, I can drill back to Dynamics GP. So I have a lot of research capabilities here in active reporter that you do not have in the trial balance for uh, Dynamics GP. And I want to show you that it's alive and active. So I'm going to go back to 2017 and period four. And I'm going to include all of my unposted entries. So over here in Dynamics GP, I'm going to make some postings into my system, into my accounting system for April of 2017. So I'm going to give it a batch, ABC, and with that batch, I'm going to uh, add that batch so there'll be temporary postings, save that batch, and now you really don't want to watch me type, so I have a macro that I've recorded some transactions, and I'm going to play those back. So there are five transactions that I've made here, five postings, and as I make those postings, if you'll notice this area right here, all the postings will be generated so that they'll come into this area of the spread of the trial balance. So I'm going to open this trial, these postings. You see them being made on the right. You see them being recorded on the left. This is a live transaction. And since they're in a batch, they're temporary. So I can say, don't include them or include them just with a keystroke. So you'll see that this trial balance is very useful and it's always up to the second. It always represents the, represents the current data in Dynamics GP. Just to show you the, uh, the um, speed of this, let me move down to the university and let's go to a trial balance in the university. 
So this is a trial balance in April, in uh, May of 2017. Again, if I want to change calendars, I'll change it to 2017 period uh, December of 2017, and it will regenerate that information. Looking down in the bottom left-hand corner, there's over 10,000 accounts. It did all the calculations real time. There are no free stored totals. It did all of these literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of transactions in those couple or three seconds. But for any number on here, I can drill down to the underlying details. So if I want to look at that thousand, a million, 91,000 is composed of these 10 transactions. And of course, if I want to look at any one of those transactions back in Dynamics GP, I can do so. I would have to change to the university data set to do so, and I won't do that at, at this time. But all of these transactions are, are, are available to you to see immediately at any point, any point in history, current year, and also your unposted transactions and batches. So all that's available to you with the, um, with the product, and it's called the interactive uh, or the active trial balance. Okay, so um, I've gone through several things here. Uh, I've shown you the Excel uh, Excel spreadsheets. I do want to comment on one thing. I just showed you that with the active trial balance, anytime that you make a posting in Dynamics GP, it's immediately reflected in the, in the active trial balance. If I make a posting and I'm looking at a financial design, let me go back up here to the one that I built here in. Um, Fabricam and these um, Mainer financial designs. If I make a posting over in Dynamics TP, how do I get it into my financial design? So let me just go back to this original one that we made. And so here in February 2017, I have a balance of six, uh, $670,000. And of course, I can drill down on that. What if I make a posting in February of 2017? back over here in Dynamics CP. Well, I can do that. I'll do that in this ABC financial posting, and I will come in here and make a posting, and I'll post it to this account. And this account is the 000-1100-00 account, and I'm gonna make this for a million dollars so you can see it real easily. And then I'm gonna make another posting to another account. Doesn't make any difference what other account uh, for a million dollars. And now I can say, um, save that. And it is a um, transaction. So I need to go to my options. I need to make sure that I'm including my unposted entries. I am. But how do I get that million dollars over here? It's real simple. It's the F9 key. As soon as I hit the F9 key, and did I do something wrong? Yes, I did something wrong because I made that posting in April, not in February, so I'll go back and fix that, 020117, and now I will save that, and now I'll come back over here and hit the F9 key, and now I just increase that by a million dollars. So the only thing that you have to do in your financials if you make a posting in Dynamics GP is hit the F9 key, and it will automatically refresh. Okay, so we'll save that. And we'll let's go back to the let's go back to the uh, PowerPoint just for a minute because now I need to show you the most remarkable thing. Uh, I can go through a list of things that I've shown you, but this is the pricing for the product. So the pricing for the product is very economical. We sell them in licensed units, and each licensed unit will be effective from one to ten Dynamics company databases. So most people will fit in that under 10 Dynamics GP databases. There are unlimited users. There is an installation assistance and two hours of training on top of that that we offer. And for that, the entire license fee is a $1,000 entry fee or $1,000 initial fee. That, that is what you pay to get all the installation assistance and those two hours of training uh, and the product, and then the, then the price of the product is $70 per month. 
So the first year, it will be 70 per month. That's 870 per year plus the $1,000. That's $1,840 for the first year if you have under 10 company databases. If you had 22 databases, you would require two licenses. The initial fee would be uh, $3,000 because you need three licenses, not two. And the monthly fee is 210 and you get three hours of training and implementation. Okay, so we've gone through the product and I wanna open it up for questions. Do we have any questions? Has anyone typed anything into the chat window for questions? I don't see them. There is a question and that is, hold on a second, let me just pop it out here real quick. Um, how much does it slow things down if you have like millions of entries? <laughs> like our cash line would have to go back 15 years and it's tens to hundreds of thousands of entries each year. Sure. And I think I showed you that a few seconds ago with the uh, with the uh, database down here in uh, in managed in uh, the university data set. But let's go back and look at that because there's really another answer to that question, and that is um, I'll save these changes. I'll exit here. I'll put this down. I'll go back into the active reporter product. And so we can go to a financial design down here in the university data set. Here's an NCAA report. And so I can go to the workbook here in the NCAA report, and I'll do this for uh, this particular year. And now, so let's go up here and look at, uh, I wish I knew which one of these had millions of transactions. Um, let's go to some of these expenses. I have no idea. This only has 471, of course. Uh, if I did a balance sheet and had a bank statement in that balance sheet, you would see tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of transactions. And it's, um, it's uh, pretty fast. So I'm going to look one more time. Let's look at institutional support here. Uh, only nine, only a thousand transactions. Operations and maintenance, only 579. Okay, let me look at, um, Let's let's do this financial. This is the year to date. Let's look here in year to date financials. And here I have 4,095. Um, and let's do this. Let's look at, um, I wish I could figure out right quick how to do more. But even if you have tens or hundreds of thousands of transactions, we typically bring in 100,000 per second. So if you have a million transactions, you're looking at a 10 second. That's one answer to your question. Another answer is that as you seed the active reporter database, you can choose to truncate history. That means even though you have 15 or 20 years in Dynamics GP, you can choose only to take the last five or 10 years over to the active reporter database. And therefore, that really uh, cuts down on the amount of data that you have there and the amount of data that you have to wade through in order to pull it up here, either on the financial design here or over in the um, over in the active trial balance. So there's two answers. One is we do 100,000 per second. Secondly is that you can truncate history so you can get rid of those years that you're really not interested in producing a trial balance or a financial statement in. Are there other questions? That is the only one so far. I'm going to give them um, another 30 seconds or so to ask any additional questions. Um, sure. And we, yeah, we'll just give you guys a few more minutes or a few more seconds to ask those questions. I also want to point out, I just pointed out a financial down here in the, well, well people are asking questions. I pronounced, uh, I looked at this NCAA report. I also want to point out that we have multiple calendars. So in Dynamics GP, you only have a single calendar, and that's the fiscal calendar, and Active Reporter treats that as the default calendar. But with Dynamics GP, with Active Reporter, you can also have many other calendars. You can have a daily calendar you can report on, but in, in the um, NCAA report, they actually needed to report by, by semester. So we can build a semester calendar and do that report on a semester basis rather than a 
a, a, a calendar that you have predefined in Dynamics GP. Or you could do it on a season basis. You could do it on the football season or the basketball season or something like that uh, so that you have lots of versatility in how you pull these numbers out of Dynamics GP and report them on different calendars. Now, some of you run projects. And those projects frequently go over the period year of period, uh, there are multiple period and even multiple years. You could have a building fund that lasted two and a half years. You can report on that building fund calendar that's much different than your fiscal calendar from Dynamics GP. Okay, Kate, do we have any more questions? That's all we have here. So. If there are additional questions or there are anything you guys want to see in addition to, always feel free that you can reach out to me and contact me via email, um, kwatts at mainersolutions.com. Um, and I can get you connected with the active reporter guys. And so, but that is it for today. Um, if we don't have any questions for today, and uh, Marvin, you are all set at this point. I just want to take an opportunity to thank everyone for attending. And yeah, at this point, we are all set. Thank you, Marvin, for all of your great information. And thank you, Kate. Yeah. And thank you, Ma Maynard, for inviting us to do the presentation today. Wonderful. Well, okay. thank you, everyone, and have a great afternoon.